Okay, we're back here live in New York City for uh, Strata Plus Hadoop World, Cloudera's conference. Uh, started three years, this is our third season. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with Dave Vellante, the co-founder of Wikibon. We're with Mike Olson, the CEO of Cloudera. I know you're really busy, we've got a tight schedule, so jump right into it. Uh, Mike, Cloudera, what a, what a uh, morphing story it's been over the past three years. I think you had hundreds and hundreds of employees now from the 30 when we first met. Um, uh, Hadoop World, we were invited by you guys three years ago, 2010, it's our third season, I guess your season if we call it, of the Cube. We've been at all of them, we love it, and uh, you guys started the show this year. Uh, the show is now being run by O'Reilly. So before we get into it, just give folks the uh, story about what the show is here, and I uh, see Cloudera is co-producing with O'Reilly. Give a quick uh, sound bite on that. Yeah, so let me give you a quick rundown. Um, so this is the fourth of these shows ever. In 2009, Cloudera organized the first ever Hadoop World here in New York City. Uh, 500 people showed up, and I have to tell you, we were ecstatic. I couldn't believe there were 500 people on the planet who knew <laughs> what Hadoop was and didn't work for Cloudera. Uh, the enthusiasm there, the energy there convinced us that interest on the East Coast and among business users was deep and real, and we should double down. Second year, the first year you guys came out, 800 people. Uh, last year, 1,400 attended. This year, 2,500 people uh, sold out the show well in advance. Um, we made the decision after last year's show to team up with O'Reilly to produce a joint show, and did that for a few reasons. First of all, I, I think that the big data and real social use case stories that get told at Strata are fantastic. Uh, I, I think that it is content and it is information that we weren't always presenting given our focus on Hadoop. Um, in addition, we thought that by bringing the two events together, we'd be able to attract a much broader population. 2,500 people later, look, I'll tell you what, I think we could have sold a lot more tickets than people that. People were getting kicked out the door because there was not enough room, fire marshal issues like last year. Yeah, if <laughs> we had been able to find a bigger venue, I think it would have been great. I don't know what we're going to do next year. This is about the biggest you can do in uh, New York City, unless you want to go to the Javits, and there you kind of need 50,000. Yeah, and we're almost there, but you know, O'Reilly knows how to run events, so he's the yeah. brother president. Plus, you're, you're the CEO of the business, and it's taxing of resources, too, internally. The whole Cloudera team ran it last year, so it's like... Uh, there's that. I mean, you know, there are a lot of advantages to controlling an event as well, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, we can set the schedule, we can have a little bit more of a hand in choosing the content. Not that there was any problem with the quality of the submissions or with the process to bring them in. 10 papers submitted for every one that we were able to uh, accept this time. <laughs> Good news if you're here, th the quality is extraordinary. W the bad news is 90% of the people doing, doing great work uh, didn't get their work. We hear it's harder to present it at, at uh, Strata and Hadoop World than it is to get in an Ivy League college, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's great. I think it's a great gesture. You guys opened up the community, so instill our leader, leaders in the, in the event and co-producing with O'Reilly. Great stuff, got that out of the way. Um, my next question is Cloudera. Give us a quick update because you guys are growing. You have a strategic shift with Impala, which we want to talk about your big announcement. But Cloudera is a company that's the company that you're leading. You got new personnel. You got your packages are increasing in terms of people. Your scope. Just give us a quick update on Cloudera. Company has grown dramatically. We've got offices now all over the United States. We remain heavily centered in California. So office in Palo Alto headquarters and a satellite office in San Francisco really for recruitment purposes. Uh, but in Washington, D.C., here in New York City, in uh, North Carolina for developers and test, uh, we've got physical presence as well. We have people on the ground in Japan, in Europe, in the U.K., and when we think about where growth is going to happen in the coming year, uh, for sure, in our ability to reach new customers, so technical field and sales we expect to grow pretty significantly, uh, and we expect to expand overseas in a very focused way. So we've got pockets of people, but I expect Kirk Dunn, our chief operating officer, to be concentrating on building out infrastructure overseas. Last year we were here, you were with Ping Lee with Excel who financed Cloudera on your board, um, talking about the big data fund. Yep. Um, and you, last year, big focus for you was the applications. Um, so I want to ask you, you know, was that a disappointment to you? Was there other forces in the market? Were you happy with the adoption of applications? Obviously, the killer app that we've been saying on theCUBE is analytics and insights, which there's no debate, that's smoking hot. So, um, 
what's your view on the application? Because last year that was a big focus. Did they materialize? Was the middleware working? You're seeing app fabric from continuity. You're seeing a lot of people putting out new things you have in Paula. Talk about the app market. Is there an app market yet? Is it just analytics? What's your view? So the war is not won, but the battles are going well. Uh, if you look at the existing established vendors, MicroStrategy has done a great job of taking its BI tooling and po pointing at Hadoop, and, and specifically at Cloudera's platform, and making sure that ordinary business users who know how to interact with MicroStrategy can analyze data in Hadoop. Uh, Informatica likewise, you can now design data processing pipelines graphically, and push that work down to a relational database or a special purpose Informatica engine, or to Hadoop. So that kind of integration lets users who understand those tools well, often for years, get at Hadoop. But you're going to see some really exciting companies launch here. Uh, ben Werther from Platfora gave a great talk about the visualization and data exploration tool that they've built that runs on top of the Cloudera platform that integrates natively with Hadoop. Our longtime partners, Datamir and Karmasphere, have good products. Th this is the quarter, and 2013 will be the year, I predict, of real explosion there. So we've seen enormous progress. It is much easier for business users to use Hadoop than ever before, and I think over the course of the next five or eight quarters, we're going to see even more So, So the application, you're happy, the battles are being fought, and some wins here and there, but analytics obviously has been the big first generation focus. Um, let's talk about simplicity in real time, because right. this sequence into, into Impala. Sure. Um, Hadoop, making Hadoop easy has always been something that people have been talking about, so you're right. seeing some progress there. Right. So kind of creating a hardened top, and with the integration of SQL, we just had Hadapt on, talking about integrating natively into the clusters rather than building connectors. So that's one question I want to ask. We can talk about that dynamic. And then secondly, we'll go back to real time. Uh, so, um, appreciate the opportunity. So, so let me begin by talking about Impala, what it is we're announcing and, and, and what it does. Um, we have known for a long time that batch data processing in Hadoop, powerful, flexible, innovative as it is, solves only part of the big data problem. Not every user can tolerate the latency, not every workload can put up with the delays and the performance that batch data processing imposes. Hadoop lets you store any kind of data. You can store it in enormous volume. What if, we and our customers said to each other, you could get all that power of MapReduce, you could do all those complex analytics, but you could also choose to ask interactive speed queries of your data. Don't want to have to move it out, I want it knit directly into the Hadoop framework. Impala is a distributed query processing engine that's a first class citizen in the Hadoop ecosystem. Your data stays exactly where it is. You leave it in HBase, you leave it in HDFS, <coughs> you type a SQL query, and you don't wait minutes, you get answers back in seconds, instantly responses, so you can work at the speed of thought. So how, do, oh go ahead, sorry. I, I was going to say, it gives users and developers the choice of how they get at their data and what kind of analytic and query support they require. So they get the best of all the power of MapReduce and the interactivity of a traditional SQL engine in the identical platform. Now you came out of the SQL world, you know, Indeed. well, and, and talk about the impact on adoption, particularly in terms of the skill sets that are out there, people who know the, the language and understand SQL. Uh, so in terms of professional skills, if you know how to type a SQL query, you now know how to talk to Cloudera's platform. Impala lets you get a data stored in Hadoop as a first class citizen. Beyond that though, think about the enormous number of high quality <coughs> applications and tools that speak ODBC and JDBC, right? Those now get to point at Hadoop and they get exactly the same responsiveness and exactly the same behavior out of the big data platform that they've long experienced from the existing relational players. So it opens up not just more users and more developers, but more <laughs> existing tooling that people can point at Hadoop and that'll drive adoption for so sure. So it's clearly a good thing for the marketplace. How does it affect your the relationship with some of the current players? Uh, like for example, we're at Oracle Open World this year, Larry basically paints this picture, do your filtering in Hadoop and then bring it into big data meets big iron. As you say, <laughs> I, I, I'm, an, I'm an old guard relational developer. I grew up in the RDBMS industry beginning in the 1980s. I watched that industry and I watched those products mature. And I will tell you, they are excellent. Look, if you've got a high performance transaction processing workload, right, if you're doing banking transactions, 
If you're running an OLAP analytic application where you're flying through the cube and looking up and figuring out, you know, in real time what users are doing, you're going to continue to run that on your big enterprise data warehouse. You now have the option for taking some of the workloads that were forced to run there before because there was simply nowhere else to put them and letting them run on Hadoop. So the idea is, look, if I've standardized on a big EDW for all my data management, well, for sure I'm flying through cubes and doing transaction processing, but I'm also doing ELT. And you know what, that's just data processing workloads. And you're paying first class fares to run that workload on your big EDW. What if you could free up that capacity to do yet more analytics and do the data exploration, the reporting, the interactive exploratory queries on a much more scale out and much lower cost infrastructure. That I think is that's the disruptive. Opportunity. That's the disruptive. Sounds like the mainframe transition to me. That's but the cost <laughs> is so low. But so okay, so that market is is waiting to be disrupted. It's being disrupted. Um, and, what's and the and barriers? Let, 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 me, let me say it's not merely that the cost is lower, but suddenly you've got a place where you can keep not just the last quarter's worth of data available for analysis, but the last decade. Yeah, so the innovation curve. The real time. So let's talk about real time. So that's a real time benefit. So that's a different mindset. Indeed. So talk about the barriers, because those guys aren't going to be disrupted quietly. They're going to hold on and clutch on to their, their data warehousing solutions, and, and eventually they'll, the smart ones will move over fast to this new, new concept. So what are the barriers to get to that real time low cost, high performance environment? Well, so let, let me say first that, as I said, I think that there are workloads that still naturally belong in the big EDW and in the big relational yep. systems, right? Yep. And Hadoop wasn't designed to attack online transaction processing, right? Sure. By letting you do exploratory queries, we've opened up a bunch of flexibility and we've enabled a bunch of new use. Um, We've got a tremendous relationship with our good partner Oracle, right? They resell CloudEra software as a part of the big data appliance. And if you're able to stand up an exadata relational system performing the kind of operations that I talked about at scale, and next to it you can put an yeah. Oracle big data appliance with the high performance connector between the two. So you can do all of your data scrubbing and cleansing yeah. and then blast it into the uh, EDW for further interactive exploration, I think Customers and both vendors. That's important. I want to capture that point because I think that's we just we were seeing a lot of that at IBM. We were just at the IOD and French on demand this early in the week doing the cube there, and they still have a huge mainframe business. Oh right? yeah. So at the top of the flagship offering, yeah, the price performance, there is still that that market. What you're saying, if I get this prop hear this properly, that a mid range, n the new use cases are the mid range. That's exploding. That wasn't there before. Is that what you're saying? Or you're able now to take workloads that didn't need those really high performance, extraordinarily demanding services, and choose, when it makes economic and performance sense to do it, to run them in Hadoop instead. And by the way, if you're running them in Hadoop, it's not just that work you can do, but you've got this hugely powerful analytic engine in MapReduce. And now, you can ask questions about the last decade's worth of point of sale transaction data, and you can build behavioral models of users over time, and you can do predictive analytics over what people are going to prefer based on a decade's yeah. worth of history. So you get the best of MapReduce and interactive query support. Which just wasn't economically problem. feasible on, on Big Iron unless, you know, for a very small select group my of final, customers. Right. My final geek question, <laughs> geek question before we kind of wrap up is HBase. Obviously HBase yeah. has morphed and we and show you what we've been working on. You've been following some of our little, little, little tool we built. Um, and it's been great. It's been such an amazing product. Um, but now HBase has grown up to be really big and popular for a lot of different instances. I noticed HBase is a key part of Impala. Can you talk about the vision of HBase? Obviously it's growing outside of the geek community. It's coming more mainstream. There's different types of databases out there, but HBase seems to be really, really popular and growing. What's your take on that and vision around HBase? Yeah, let me talk a little bit about how we view the platform overall. So uh, if you read the announcement, if you listened to the messaging that came out of Cloudera today, Impala is our real-time query offering, RTQ. Uh, yeah. is what we brand it as when you buy the enterprise support and everything else. HBase is real-time delivery, or RTD. HBase was the first of the real-time additions to the platform. It lets you get at individual records at basically web speeds and at web scale, right? We believe Impala offers the same sort of real-time access to a different sort of user. I predict that over the course of the next two quarters to two years, you're going to see the Hadoop platform evolve further. It'll 
support more real-time workloads, and certainly it's an area in which we are actively investing. Uh, and I predict it'll attack different programming paradigms, different ways to get at data. There are things happening in the community now with, with Yarn, the new strategy for basically deploying and executing uh, compute operations on a cluster that are going to make it much easier to build innovative ways to get at your data. So people think of Hadoop as HDFS and MapReduce. But look, you guys, that was just the problem that Google had first, right? Over time, this platform is going to grow into something much more capable, yeah. much more flexible. We're thrilled to release Impala as what we think of as, as really the first volley in that war, but I think yeah. you're going to see lots of interesting stuff happening from us and from the community broadly. You know, it's great uh, having you in theCUBE. One, you know your business, you've been running it, but you're also a geek and uh, you're a big Cal Berkeley dude. Go and Bears. Uh, we just had Daniel from, <laughs> who was at MIT, now he's at Yale. East Coast, West Coast, no real big rivalry there. Well, do we do a joke about Brown versus these guys? Um, but the question legitimately is, I know you follow a lot of the academic activities. Mm -hmm. You know, you got stuff at Carnegie Mellon, U University of Illinois Champaign's got some compiler stuff that's got virtual machines built into it. You've got stuff going on all over the top computer science programs. Yeah. What are you seeing, what is Mike Olson seeing out there that gets you intrigued coming out of the computer science programs right now that, uh, that are going to be related to the trajectory that this in this new industry of the big data group that's here uh, is going to connect into over the next uh, decade. There are projects like Spark and Shark and Mesos that I think are pretty interesting. The trick, really the advantage of open source software, we don't need to predict in advance which of those is going to win. We can sit back as a vendor with presence in the market and we can wait to see what gets adopted by users and what solves really interesting problems. I mean, the reason that HBase rolled into the Cloudera platform is we noticed our customers were using it on their own. They went out, found the software, it was clearly solving a problem that they had, and so we invested in it. A and we'll continue to do that with the innovative work happening in the academic community. I think there's lots of interesting platform work, and I named a few of those projects. If I had to say one thing that excites me pretty much right now, it is the quality of the data exploration and visualization work that's coming out. Uh, stealthy companies are getting funded in the Valley these days. We get a chance to look at a few of those that are making it much easier to wrap your head around a yeah. petabyte in real time and just swim through it and get that explore. signal the awareness I mean uh, Tim Estes had a great line as keynote he said you know there's an understanding gap I mean the attention is flat but data is exploding yeah so digital reasoning with synthesis builds a beautiful platform for understanding and visual visualizing that kind of data likewise uh, Ben Werther at Platfora launched yesterday with beautiful renderings and huge interactivity, and that kind of stuff hasn't been available on a platform before. Yeah. That unlocks business users, right? All Cloudera does is make this platform safe for IT staff to operate. We rely on partners to build those things. 400 plus companies in the Cloudera Connect ecosystem right now, that's tremendous for us, but that kind of innovation is going to drive adoption, and that's really important to us. Okay, Mike Olson is the CEO of Cloudera. Cloudera is the founder of Hadoop World, started uh, with 500 people, not 500 people, but 500, 500 people, people, 500 people show, yep. four years ago, 2009. We've been doing theCUBE here ever since. We've been a great friend of theCUBE. We love uh, Cloudera, um, great supporter of us, and, uh, and vice versa. You guys are doing some great work, continue to be the leader, and, and uh, appreciate the support. Um, I know you got, you're busy, so thanks for sharing your perspective, and um, good to see you, and we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. John, thanks. Good deal. Thank you, Mike. Good, man. <laughs> Great to see you again. Awesome. Thank cool. you. The problems of scale, continuous availability,